what it is, how you bossin squad. This your girl Kaylee and I'm back with another episode of a BC Boss Chick Recap and Review. This is episode 7 of the Bell Collective Sister Mention. Let's get into this. The first scene starts off with Latrice, her publicist, and Antoinette in their vehicle. They're going to meet Kaylon in this rural spot. Latrice said it looks like a plantation. Does this girl have us going to a plantation or something like that? So they roll up to a black owned farm and they meet Kaylon with Dr. Cindy. Um, so they're wondering why, you know, why are we meeting at a farm? Um, the ladies are not dressed for farm life. Uh, Antoinette could barely even pronounce farm. She said, is that how you pronounce it, farm? And they had on their heels. So she recollected that Kayleen mentioned she wanted to buy a goat. So this is the reason for their farm visit today. Um, Kayleen gave the girls some boots. Um, they got to feeding the animals, walking on the land, just, you know, taking a, a hike. They stated they needed a girl's day in nature, you know, you know, release some positive energy in nature. So, yeah, it seemed like a, a nice little spot, you know, after getting over the thought of a plantation dealing with Miss Kayline. So Latrice decided to rehash uh, the events of her anniversary with Cliff and how she felt like she messed up his surprise for her and then she made it better with a another version of it, you know, to explain a little bit deeper and apologize in her own way. Uh, she mentioned she gave a red light special later that night, so they had a good time. And somebody was like, oh, are we talking about babies? She said, a little Clifforella. Clifforella, so that's what we name in their potential babies, Clifforella. Uh, I don't know about that name, but we shall see. Next scene, shot over to Marie. Marie is at home waiting for Dr. Chandler to stop by. He is doing a house call for today. Marie wanted to get together with Jerez and his baby's mothers. Yes, I said mothers. There are three. Two showed up. It was Tori and KK and Jerez came as well as he was supposed to. So Marie um, mentioned that she thought Cedric would have shown up because he showed up the last time but you know she said she hadn't been able to to get in touch with him as of lately. So the, the Dr. Chandler asked the baby moms what their expectations of Jerez was for the children and Tori the first baby mom said that she just wants him to be the best father he could be to their son. KK mentioned that she would like him to just be present. Be present because she lacked a father figure and she would want um, her son to have that father figure, you know, to grow up with him in life. So yeah, that's more than fair to me. Um, so Dr. Chandler asked Marie to expand, you know, her thoughts on things. She stated that, you know, she does for the kids because those are her grandbabies, you know. But she would like Jerez to take more responsibility on handling the day-to-day -day routines with the with the um the children and the baby moms. She would like the baby moms to reach out to him for whatever that they need. Um, she mentioned they should never know where the funds are coming from, even if he does have to call her and say, Hey mom, I need this for the kids. You know, they should never, you know, really be reaching out to her because the kids are his responsibilities. I agree with that. You know, get him into a space where he is taking responsibility and becoming that man that he is supposed to be for those children. Um, when you have kids, no matter what age, the kids are the top priority. You can multitask, but at the end of the day, those kids come first. Marie also informed the ladies that she has lupus and fibromyalgia. So some days she's just not in a space where her body can handle taking care of these kids so that they should be in a space where they can take care of it and take care of it with Jerez because she needs to take care of her health with the 12 pills and the injections that she needs to take. It's time to, you know, it's time to man up. 
So I, I understand. Oh, KK, she, the second baby mom, she reached out to Tori, you know, and she said she would like for them to be friends. Not besties, but be friends um, for the kids. She would like them to be cordial where they can say, hey, let's get the kids together for a play date. Now, Tori, she was there kind of standoffish. She stated that, you know, don't be alarmed by my nonchalantness. I'm just chill, taking it all in. Not quite sure if she is ready for that step, but kudos to you, KK, for being an adult, you know, stepping up into the, those adult shoes because that's what mothers are supposed to do. Do not be in the mind space of trying to stay in this because you think this man is doing this with this woman or have any beef because of whatever the messy situation may have been. It's about those kids, they are siblings. Do what you got to do for them. So I felt this was a great conversation um, to have with him. Everybody was on, you know, the same page. It was positive. It seems like the therapy is helping. And the scene shot over to Antoinette. Antoinette is going out into this area, a rural area near a pond. It was a pond side, lakeside, pond side. And there's a gentleman a gentleman there with wine glasses, you know, a picnic set up, you know, all there waiting for her. So Antoinette says she met a man in Ghana after her husband um, finally left the house. The last day he left the house, she took a trip to Ghana just to clear her mind and get ready to start her new journey as a single woman. Well, she met this man, David, David in Ghana. He is from Seattle, but he was on this trip as well. He's a divorcee. Um, so she felt like they were vibing on the trip, had good banter, comedy. You know, they were, you know, making jokes and, you know, having great conversations. So he decided to come spring up on her for, you know, a lunch date. Um, they left and talked and she told him about her practice and what she is accomplishing. She invited him to the sip and see. He said he'll be there. They decided to toast and they toasted to this not being their first toast and hopefully not being their last. And he said it won't. So we'll see where this unfolds. Go ahead, Antoinette. Go ahead. Get back into the groove of things. Definitely take your time. Time for you. But, you know, it's it's time to see what's out there as well. You know, if, you're, if you can handle it, go right ahead. Take it slow, though. Back to Marie. Marie is home and Essie has stopped over and she's talking about Cedric. Cedric has not popped up, so she's wondering, where is he? You know, is he up to his old shenanigans? Is he out there cheating? And Essie is just like, I'm tired of this. You know this is his M.O. You know this. This is what he does. You know, he's probably out there. She was like, well, you know, you don't think we should give him the benefit of the doubt? You know, she was like, you know, this is what he does. It's not the first time, that, you know, you should be used to that now, basically. Marie was like, I'm going to give him a call. Let's see. So she called, and he didn't answer. As he had already said, just like he'd be coming home and hiding the phone, wherever he's at now, he probably don't even have his phone trying to hide it from whoever he is with. That may very well be true. So it's time to, you know, move forward if this situation is not working for you. And that's what Essie had to say. If this situation is turning out to be like the 15th and 16th and 17th time that he has done this, it's time to get it together and move on. It's time to find your happy place. And I agree with that. Go right ahead and do what you got to do. You know, heal yourself. You know, take time for you. Worry about you and your kids. And, you know, keep pushing. Nothing wrong with it. The next thing takes us over to Letitia and Tambra. They meet up so that they can go to City Hall to meet up with Councilman Stamps to see where his head is at. Letitia has not spoken to him since the brunch. So, whew, it was time to see what was going on. Plus, she had been making calls about Ferris Street and no one was responding or giving her any information on how they can move forward. Um, she's hitting a roadblock, so she needs to speak to him. 
she you know thank the keep their stamps for you know allowing them to have some time to meet and he he just gave it some cut and dry you know the brunch kind of turned him off of the whole idea he said reputation is everything um, somehow the information from the brunch had gotten around to some other people so that's why they were pulling back and he was honest and said he almost wanted to back out too um, now Tim Brooke you know she stood up for her friend as well and said it normally does not go like that with the brunches they are what they are they are meant to empower they are successful in what they do so that one bad day should not you know diminish what her business is and her character so councilman stamp stated that he is a man of his word one and two he is going by tambra's recommendation and he will keep his word to continue to guide her um like i said reputation does matter so He's hoping to move forward with the positive energy and shed more positive light on Ferris Street than the negative that has transpired. Um, so yeah, they're gonna kick it off, and he said, "Don't worry about the you know the roadblocks and the bumps in the road. You know they'll get through it." Next thing, Tambra meets up with her ex Damon, and he greets her with a bouquet of pink roses, her favorite. Um, they get to talking and, you know, uh, she stated that, she stated he has been putting forth the effort um, to make sure that the romance is at the forefront of what they have going on. You know, they are trying to correct the mistakes from the last time and she said he's getting brownie points for making the efforts towards the, the, the romance. Um, it's good. It, it seems, it seems pretty good. So she explained to him about the, the girl the girl drama, the girl's drama as far as the uh, the brunches, as far as meeting up at the staging and champagne and how they were discussing Letitia. She's wanted to put together this sister pension so that they can get it together, get it correct, and just support each other. You know, get it all out there, support each other, and you know, she doesn't want anyone to be talking behind anyone's back. Just get it out there. She also had to bring to his attention her doctor appointments and the doctor wanting to have another surgery to remove the fibroids before they can go forward with uh, implanting her eggs or anything like that. So he, he knows that a family and her career is something that she wants to maintain. So he says, whatever you, you're wanting to do, I am behind you 100%. You know, he's with her. I like that. I like this. I like this arrangement. Like I, I, I tweeted, I tweeted Tim, bro. I like where this is going. This rekindling. Keep it going good. Develop it. And we all had a wedding. Invite me, girl. <laughs> we get to the day of the sistervention. Tambra has invited Latrice, Antoinette, and um, Latrice's PR person meal they are together they meet up at the house first she she explained to them what happened with councilman stamps and the reputation factor and how it diminished what Leticia is wanting to do with barristry for the moment and in the interview sector Latrice says it may be karma because of these these brunches I you know I stand behind what I say behind these brunches they don't do no good the women just tearing each other down I don't I don't get that because I don't understand it I don't understand it because one you never say this directly to Leticia you stated that you understand what the brunches are for um, if you have seen any shade anybody trying to put you down um, in the brunches bring it to Leticia's attention and let her know who is doing it and if the only person that you're talking about is Marie then you know the situation with that. If you got a problem with Marie, speak to Marie. So Antoinette has said that, you know, the brunches have been a disaster to everyone that she has been to. And Latrice said the brunches have been a disaster with everyone she has been to. So Tambra had to stop her right there. You've only been to two, Antoinette, and Latrice, you've only been to one. You cannot base your brunches experiences based off one and two interactions. And you cannot base Everyone, you cannot judge everyone at the brunches based off that one person that you had an issue with. 
you can't do that. So male acts, is it possible to support, since Tamara said, can we just support Letitia in her, you know, her dream and her mission? Um, and male, the PR person stated, can we support her without Marie by her side, basically? At that point, Letitia comes in and Tamra had her glass of wine already ready, ready for all of this conversation, all of this going on. So she was like, what's going on? So it, while they're talking, she's realizing that the sister mention is for her since they are, they feel that the brunches are negative because of her and her continuously inviting Marie. So Leticia brought up the sage party and how, you know, if you were being real, you know, if you were wanting to be positive, why was I a topic of discussion at your sage and champagne? And Antoinette tried to say, no, you weren't. And she said, well, I heard, Leticia said, I heard that I was a topic of discussion, you know, of course, Timber was there, so of course she told her friend what was being discussed because she didn't like it because she wanted to bring bring it here to put it out on the table. So when you're confronted, be honest about what was said and what was brought up. You did discuss her at the at the um the Sage and Champagne. You allowed Kaylon to discuss her. You allowed Latrice to continue with the first time that she saw her at the brunch. You know, the first time she was introduced to the brunch when Marie talked about her hair. So, yeah, it was discussed. Say that. Don't hide from it. Say that. They wanted her to admit that Marie was the problem. Because Latrice said, Latrice said that Marie is always rah, rah, rah. She can't get a word in edgewise. And they just wanted her to say, yeah, Marie is the common denominator in the issues. Letitia said she can't speak for what, you know, what's going on with Marie, but she can say that both parties were acting ratchet and raunchy at this, at the brunches, the first encounter. And um, nobody mentioned Kaylon's outburst at the second one. Like, if you would have just taken the hint to just be quiet, I don't think it would have, could have escalated. One person can't argue by themselves. Somebody has to keep going. It escalated. Nobody pointed the finger at Kaylon for helping to escalate the situation. And I don't like that. At this point, Antoinette looks at Tamra and says, I advise that we, you know, stay out of their business. <laughs> this, this is what I gather. She knows that Tamra told Letitia about the sage and champagne. And it popped off heavy. It popped off heavy where Tamara said, this is what she does daily. She is a voice of women and wanting them to, you know, be supportive of each other and be sisters in this sisterhood. Antoinette said that it's not possible in this reality to do that. And at this point, I think she's just agitated because, you know, she just got caught up in some mess and she, she doesn't know how to verbalize it. She got booked. Tamra got booked and she was just, Tamra asked her, are you a black woman? Like, are you a black woman that really wants to support other black women? I guess that triggered Antoinette because Antoinette was like, are you a black woman? You you might not even be a black woman because you the one who said you ain't never experienced. Whoa. What that had to do with this? What, it, what did that have to do with this? She was asking a question of as far as wanting to have a peaceful sisterhood you took it to that and that was so out of line so uh they kept going back and forth she said i'll pay you to shut up because tim was like i do this for a living i talk for a living i do this for a living so antoinette was like i'll pay you to shut up and it, it just got heated but they calmed down antoinette apologized and said you know if this is what you want to do to keep you know with the kumbaya then that's you. I just won't speak on it. I can't tell you to be quiet and hush. I can't make you do, you know, anything regarding this, but I can keep myself out of it. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. It shouldn't have gotten it heated. Shouldn't have gotten it heated. At this point, Latrice is not saying anything. Mel is not saying anything. Letitia is not saying anything, but they are trying to get them to calm down. So everything that was said in the interviews, Latrice, 
everything that Latrice said negative about the brunches and Marie and in the interview sector, she didn't say that to their faces. I've never seen that. She's never said any of this to their faces. And I'm not saying that she is scared, but I'm saying keep it real, y'all. Stop, stop with the faking. If it's something that you got to say, say it to the party that you got the problem with. If you're not willing to talk it out, don't discuss them at a later event. If it's not a factor for you to speak, speak on it in the moment to them when you're in their face. If you say you're done with it, leave it alone when you kick in with your girls. That should not be a conversation piece when you kick in with your girls. If you can't even speak to the person that you got the issue with. That's just my thing. That's me personally. That's how you keep it, you know, positive. That's how you keep negative energy away from you. Because you invite it when you're not around them. You, you still invite it. So I, I just feel like everybody needs to have a sit down and talk about it. Latrice and Antoinette go off to the side because Antoinette is, you know, in her fields at the moment. Not only is this heated, she's also going through some, some things with her herself and feeling doubt with her business and she says it gets lonely when you don't have a partner your husband like you used to the you know to kind of comfort you so latrice was there to give her that encouraging word that she needed i'm here with you you're gonna do good you know even though there's no backup plan you're gonna dominate this because you are strong you are smart yes lady you know manifest you have already created and started this vision Stay positive. Keep your eyes on it. Don't take it off. Don't take your foot off the pedal. It's go time. You have no time to to sit here and wallow in the what ifs. Focus on the what is. And that dental practice is coming. You hear me? It's no time for thoughts of failure. We we winning this year. So you got this, girl. You got this. Everything is about miscommunications. Is what I'm I'm thinking with what you're going through with the girls. Sit down and really have some one-on-one. Get to know these ladies. Stop the judgment and just get to know these ladies. Because it, each one of you all, you there are layers to you guys. And you're not even sharing the best part of yourself with each other. Including that, your business as well. So, you know, get it together, ladies. You guys, let me know what you thought. If you watched the episode, let me know any of your thoughts. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you for the next episode. Remember, guys, I love you. And tell me how you bossing.